web dev can be annoying. I personally like things that make annoying stuff less annoying. That's why I like HTMX. HTMX was created by Carson Gross. Carson also created grubbrain.dev, which is a pretty funny take on programming and the plague that is unnecessary complexity. The fundamental idea behind HTMX is the concept of hypermedia driven applications. The hypermedia driven application architecture is this newish oldish approach to building web applications. It combines the simplicity and flexibility of traditional multi-page apps with the better user experience of single page applications. The fundamental thought behind HTMX is we can use HTML embedded syntax rather than raw JavaScript to achieve better front end interactivity. And instead of returning something like JSON, we can return hypermedia HTML in this case directly. If you're confused, that's okay. I was too. But let's talk about a little historical context just to make this clearer, then jump into some examples. Back in the day, before a new web framework was created every two seconds, websites would be defined with multiple HTML pages, and we called that MPA, multi-page application. This limited the amount of cool interactions you could do on the front end, because every user interaction also required the browser to interact with the server, which served as the single source of truth for our application. A lot of server interactions can impact the speed at which our web page can respond to user input. But as browsers became more advanced, it started to make more sense to handle a lot of that user interaction with the browser using JavaScript. So we kind of tossed multi-page applications as an industry and started leaning more heavily into React-like frameworks, React, Vue, Svelte, etc. However, this presented a new problem because now we have to keep track of what's happening in our app in two places, the browser, the client, and the server. Tracking application state in two places makes things more difficult. You have to sync what's happening on the front end with what's happening on the back end all the time, which can get messy pretty fast. Enter in the age of the API, which is a pretty successful way of handling these by inserting something in the middle between the client and server and actually using this data format, JSON, to make sure that we understand that the client and server should be in sync and we can verify that. HTMX takes a bit of a hybrid approach, removing the need for a middleman JSON API, giving you the benefits of having the server as a single source of truth, like with multi-page applications, but also enhancing the user interactivity piece by using these custom attributes in your JavaScript to mock that behavior. It's still really JavaScript, it's, it's just not JavaScript that you have to write. This feels kind of weird if you're coming from something like React, so let's explain a little further, then look at some project examples. On the React note, since we're talking about it, if you're going to compare HTMX with something like React, I would tell you, don't. It's like comparing a beaver and an alligator. They both live in the woods and near water, but they are very different beasts. Sometimes I need to cut down a tree and build a dam, and sometimes I need to be able to adapt to whatever situation I'm confronted with in the moment, which is where React like frameworks kind of come into play. And if it's best in my mind, cause gators are opportunistic feeders, that probably makes zero sense yet. That's what popped in my mind for some reason. So I'm running with it. If I'm building a blog or a simple site, I'm reaching for HTMX all day. If I'm building discord or Twitch, I would probably reach for something like React, Vue, Svelte, etc. For example, I've been working on a couple different types of projects with HTMX. Hopefully when we jump into them, it'll illustrate to you kind of when you might want to use HTMX, what it's really good at, or some of the limitations, etc. Two of these use cases I think are a great fit for HTMX, and one I kind of have mixed emotions on. Hands down, the most amazing thing about HTMX for me is I can build web apps using Golang. I use Golang, Temple, and HTMX for all the projects we're about to dive into. HTMX doesn't really care what language you use on the back end, but all of my examples will be using Golang. If you want the code, comment below and I'll create a separate repo for you guys. The first project started as a command line application I made to aid with OSINT investigations. I made a video on that and I can link that in the bio. The app simply takes in a username and tells you if that username exists on the top 10 social platforms. This was a phenomenal fit for HTMX and made me want to keep exploring HTMX. 
The amount of user interactivity I was able to accomplish with simple things like the loader that I would have had to write JavaScript myself for, HTMX just kind of handled for me with very little markup. I was able to translate this simple CLI app into HTMX in about an hour. If you have stuff like that, that you want to add a UI on top of, HTMX is a perfect fit for that. The next project was a file uploader. I'm messing with some retrieval augmented generation techniques on top of chat GPT, and my user would need to be able to upload their own files. So here we are. Super easy to do with HTMX, and this is the first case that it's worth mentioning HTMX lessens the amount of JavaScript you have to write. It doesn't remove the need to write JavaScript completely. You can see it here with the progress bar, and you'll see a very extreme example in the next project. But HTMX handles the post and the replacement of that component with an updated view very easily where I would usually have to write JavaScript. Temple fits the need for conditional rendering. Overall, I really love this stack working together. The last project is a very different project. It's a diagram builder that I just started. I really wanted to see how HTMX could simplify a mostly JavaScript project. Canvas requires a lot of JavaScript, but I was still able to do most of what I needed very quickly from a prototyping perspective. I do think that the project could get bigger and I could run into some issues potentially, but it wasn't that difficult up front. And honestly, I've had more difficulty in React Like Frameworks getting Canvas up and running. I'm just saying that's my experience. Now, if you're trying to decide what you should use for your next project, there are a few things that I would consider. If it's just you coming from React and you want to learn something new, use HTMX. Learning is fun. If you're building something on a team, take the team skill set into consideration. If you all know React, then use React. If you all know whatever, then use that thing, whatever that thing is. If you're a team that is good at backend with little familiarity with React, then HTMX could be a phenomenal option for your squad. It fits great into the Golang workflow. And I, I think can get a team that has backend experience already up and running in the UI space very, very quickly. All in all, just do what's best for your team. Overall, do I think that HTMX will take over web dev? No. Do I think that HTMX has a very meaningful place in web dev? Yes. Being able to combine HTMX with a language like Go has made web dev fun again. And I think that's a massive accomplishment. If you're still here, thank you. See you in the next video.